Jones Act Compliance Strategies for U.S. Offshore Wind Construction As renewable energy continues to comprise a larger share of the U.S. power mix, offshore wind remains the next frontier of the U.S. green energy boom. Today, the U.S. hosts only one operational commercial offshore wind farm, the 5-turbine 30MW Block Island Wind Farm. However, a robust pipeline of project is under development with leases secured, development well underway, and construction targeted for 2022 till 2024. By some observers' analysis by the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, a branch of the U.S. Department of the Interior, is currently reviewing the construction and operation plan of nine more projects is expected to complete another six by 2025 and has announced plan to hold lease auction for up to seven new sites by 2025. The Biden-Harris administration has established a goal of 30 GW of U.S.-based offshore wind power by 2030 and issued an executive order targeting a goal of permitting at least 25 GW by 2025. Despite such tailwind, obstacle abound. Although development and permitting plan for the 800MW Fine Yard Wind Farm, which was approved by regulators in 2021 and broke ground in November, are viewed by many in the industry as blueprints for solving some of the community, permitting, and technical challenges that other projects will face. U.S. developers still will have to contend with a variety of challenges local opposition from certain communities and fishing groups, the need for interconnection and transmission upgrade, and the usual array of commercial, technical, legal, and financial hurdles that accompany billion-dollar infrastructure projects, particularly those that involve installation of towers the size of a Manhattan skyscraper at sea fire specially designed and, thus far, European-owned vessel. Many of these challenges will be overcome via strategies informed by successes in Europe's more developed market. However, a unique obstacle to U.S. development for which U.S. developers will not be able to look to lesson or learn in Europe is with respect to the Jones Act, a shoot of U.S. maritime laws and decision that requires vessel use in certain aspects of coastwise trade transportation of people, merchandise, and industrial activities within U.S. territorial waters, be U.S. field, U.S. flagged, U.S. citizen owned and U.S. citizen operated. Because offshore wind turbines require installation via a specially built self-elevating and self-propelled wind turbine installation vessel WTIV and because to date such vessel only exists in foreign waters and with foreign crews, many see the John A. Compliant as a potential bottleneck for the nascent industry's progress. In a December 2020, U.S. Government Accountability Office GAO report, stakeholders described two approaches to using vessel to install offshore wind energy projects in the United States. Either approach may lead to the construction of new vessels that comply with the Jones Act. Under one approach, a Jones Act compliant WTIV will carry component from a U.S. port to the site and also install the turbine. A WTIV has a large deck, legs that allow the vessel to lift out of the water, and a tall crane to lift and place turbine. Stakeholders told the GAO there are currently no Jones A compliant vessel capable of serving as WTIV, although Dominion Energy is building one. Under the second approach, a foreign flag WTIV would install the turbine with component carried to the site from U.S. port by Jones A compliant feeder vessel. This was done in the case of Block Island, which is currently the only operational offshore wine farm in U.S. territorial waters. 
while some potential feeder vessel exist, stakeholders said a larger one would probably need to be built to handle the large turbine developers would likely use. Port improvement will likely also be required to accommodate this feeder vessel. Although navigation of John Egg requirement will be a challenging prerequisite to successful U.S. offshore wind development, opportunity abound for market players that are able to employ one of several key strategies to differentiate themselves from the competition and overcome this uniquely stateside challenge. Further background, Section 27 of the Merchant Marine Act of 1920 and its attendant regulation and subsequent decision issued by U.S. Customs and Border Protection, the regulatory body overseeing Jones Act interpretation, are collectively referred to as the Jones Act. At its core, the Act requires that the vessel engage in activities such as transportation of merchandise and passengers, dredging, towing, and related vessel escort services and towing assistance between two points in the territorial U.S. waters, three must be U.S. built, U.S. flagged, U.S. citizen owned, and U.S. citizen crewed. In 2021, an amendment to the Outer Continental Shelf Land Act, OCSLA, which covers matters pertaining to U.S. waters and the seabed beneath, coupled with two U.S. Customs and Border Protection, CBP, a ruling confirmed that Jones Act compliance will be a critical step in the U.S. offshore wind construction. First, the Oxla amended clarified the device affixed to the seabed for the purposes of oil and gas exploration, as well as developing non-mineral energy resources, fall within exclusive federal jurisdiction and constitute coastwise point under the Jones Act. The CBP ruling issued February 4, 2021, letter affirmed to the market that although certain portion of the project construction and turbine erection process could fall outside the purview of the Jones Act and be completed using non-compliant vessel, the Act would ultimately apply to offshore wind construction and operation and, therefore, require the market to carefully adapt to the Jones Egg requirement. Potential solution. Of course, the most obvious solution for project sponsors is to build John's Egg Compliant WTIV, which might be made available for charter. Dominion Energy has done exactly that with its carry bits, which is expected to be a $500 million largest of its kind installation vessel to be based out of Hampton Roads, Virginia.